Hi everyone, this is Dr. Stefan. Welcome to interstitiallungdisease.info. In this episode, I'd like to answer a question about whether fibrosis can heal and if pulmonary fibrosis is considered treatable and if someone who has, for example, portable oxygen or ambulatory oxygen can actually get better and not need the oxygen in the future. And this is a tough question to answer. Obviously, I'm not your doctor. I, I cannot provide you personalized advice for your own case. This is information on the internet to help you maybe have better, more informed conversations with your own healthcare team. And I do encourage you to always talk to them in the first place rather than rely on information online, even though that may be sometimes difficult and I can understand that because consultation time can be short. But basically, the question that I received from uh, Andrea Ruiz, I think. So basically, she is asking, can the scarring ever heal itself? Reason being, uh, is uh, a person able to stop being dependent on portable oxygen? So difficult question to answer because obviously, first of all, it depends from, from case to case. And also it's important to note that not all situations in which people need oxygen are related directly to the pulmonary fibrosis. So there may be conditions which are reversible. So a person may stop needing the oxygen at some point if those other conditions are healed, for example. But in many circumstances, if someone is prescribed ambulatory oxygen or extra oxygen because of the pulmonary fibrosis, so scarring of the lungs, not any other type of uh, lung condition that is uh, ir you know, reversible, in those situations, probably oxygen may still be needed. And I don't want to discourage anyone by saying this. It's just we need to be realistic about what we can expect from treatment in pulmonary fibrosis and it's a terrible condition and I do understand that that's not necessarily something that you want to hear that you know you may need oxygen for life but this is something that how shall I put it it depends from person to person and how much oxygen you need really is dependent on the extent of fibrosis how progressive it is how what's the potential to stabilize the condition what's the potential to treat any other conditions that may lead to low oxygen levels because it's not always just pulmonary fibrosis so this is really important to to know so obviously it's a simple question but it requires a more nuanced and complicated answer and i'm sorry if sometimes i wish i could provide you just a simple yes or no answer but it all depends it all depends from person to person but let me just talk a little bit more about why someone may need oxygen because this may be a more relevant uh, thing to understand. And if you understand that, then you can see maybe oxygen therapy as a form of treatment as if you're taking some tablets. Because that's where I would uh, like to raise more awareness. Because a lot of people have a lot of negative um, perceptions about using oxygen. It's considered a terminal thing. Whereas I tend to consider it more as a prescription for a treatment, a medication that you're using as a complementary treatment to your usual uh, antifibrotic therapies or other therapies for your pulmonary fibrosis or interstitial lung disease. So people tend to, tend to require oxygen if we're talking just about the pulmonary fibrosis or the interstitial lung disease, when the lungs are affected to the point where they cannot provide enough oxygen initially when you're doing something strenuous. So when you're exercising more, your body needs more oxygen. And obviously, if your lungs are affected, maybe they're not working at their full capacity, as you're starting to pant, to breathe faster and deeper, you know, the amount of functional lung is reduced. So obviously, your oxygen levels will not uh, be able to keep up. Basically, as you're exercising, your lungs won't provide enough oxygen to keep the levels normal. And that can put more strain on other organs such as the heart and lead to complications. So actually using oxygen in those circumstances keeps you on an even keel, keeps things stable, keeps the oxygen levels normal so that the other organs do not struggle. So basically you're just giving the body what it needs. And this is of, of course due to the lung condition. Now pulmonary fibrosis or lung scarring is considered irreversible at this stage. So we cannot really reverse the scarring. However, interstitial lung disease as a whole contains many conditions. It's not only just idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis or conditions in which the fibrosis is the main component. There may be lung inflammation. So there may be conditions such as maybe hypersensitivity pneumonitis, uh, which is considered more of an inflammatory condition of the lungs, or maybe your 
pulmonary fibrosis, your ILD is related to a rheumatological disease such as rheumatoid arthritis. So maybe um, you're having something called connective tissue disease associated with interstitial lung disease, which is a mouthful, but it just means that there's some kind of rheumatological autoimmune condition that is inflammatory in nature that also affects the lungs. And in those circumstances, there may be since scenarios in which your lungs are quite inflamed, but as your therapy for that condition that leads to the inflammation starts to work, the inflammation may go down and your oxygen need may also go down. So you may be able to get away with less oxygen or stop the oxygen completely. So it depends on the circumstance a lot. But if it's just pulmonary fibrosis, just lung scarring, and those situations, um, probably because the scarring is not reversible and there will be some damage to the lungs that cannot go away and we're just trying to make things stable so that they don't get worse, in those circumstances probably we cannot stop the oxygen. But there may be associated with pulmonary fibrosis, with interstitial lung disease, um, there may be other conditions which lead to oxygen being need needed. One of these circumstances is when people have associated emphysema. So this is a condition that often is associated with smoking. And unfortunately, lung conditions such as pulmonary fibrosis tend to occur late in life. And people may have accumulated some other diagnosis, some other conditions of the lungs that are not related to the fibrosis itself. So for example, someone may be suffering with advanced COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, which has a component of emphysema that's quite significant, which leads to the thinning out of the lung, basically. And that's related generally to smoking or some other environmental exposures. And that in itself can make you require oxygen. And it may not only be the lung scarring. So that's a situation in which, obviously, if you are continuing to smoke, my advice would be to try to stop because you will stop the worsening of that condition. And that may make you at least keep the same oxygen level so you don't require more. Another condition that can be associated with pulmonary fibrosis and interstitial lung disease, and especially with some other forms of some specific forms of interstitial lung disease, is pulmonary hypertension. So this is where the blood pressure between the heart and the lungs, so in the in the pulmonary artery, increases, and that can basically lead to poor circul circulation within the lungs. So the the blood going through the lungs doesn't it, because of poor circulation cannot catch all the oxygen that the lungs provide. So basically, you may, in those circumstances, require a lot of oxygen, maybe, even though the lungs are minimally affected, or there is not so much in the sense of lung disease, but actually there is more of this pulmonary vascular disease. So this basically this circulatory problem within the lungs. Now, they can, there can be treatments available for pulmonary hypertension. So it's important to discuss these uh, things with your doctor. But in those scenarios, people with pulmonary hypertension generally require ambulatory oxygen or portable oxygen because that's when the oxygen levels actually go down. When you're trying to exercise, circulation is affected. Obviously, the blood cannot go through the lungs as quickly as it should be. As, um, and you're not getting the oxygen in the blood on exertion. At rest, you may be fine, but as soon as you're starting to put a bit of strain on your body and the blood flow increases, the body cannot keep up with that. So the oxygen levels don't keep up with that. So that's where treatment for pulmonary hypertension is maybe required. It may not may or may not be indicated in your case, depending on the situation. And oxygen in this scenario has a very important role because it reduces a certain reflex that the body has to constrict vessels where oxygen is low. So this is uh, an adaptive reaction of the body but it can lead to worsening of the pulmonary hypertension if you're not having adequate oxygen levels. And this is a problem because if you're not using oxygen, uh, supplementary oxygen in those circumstances, your body may actually struggle more and the strain on your heart can be increased even further. So using oxygen in those scenarios can actually help a lot. So it's like a treatment for both low oxygen level and the pulmonary hypertension. So this is one scenario. Now, obviously, there may be other heart conditions, generally, that affect the circulation around the lungs and the blood flow through the body that may also lead to low oxygen. So this is one of the situations and that where oxygen may be needed. And if that condition can be improved, potentially by optimizing 
uh, heart medications, things like that, oxygen levels, oxygen requirements of the body may go down a bit. It's not always the rule. Depending on the case, talk to your healthcare team to see if that's a, a scenario. And the final thing that I'd like to maybe consider is that sometimes people who are diagnosed with a, an interstitial lung disease, maybe acutely, there's been an exacerbation, a flare-up, whatever's going on in the lungs, you may get an infection. And in those scenarios, you may require oxygen for a period of time until your lungs recover. So that's maybe one of the situations where oxygen use may be temporary and it may be reassessed after you come out of hospital after one, two, three months. And it may be found that you don't actually require supplementary oxygen in that scenario because your lungs have recovered to the point where they can sustain normal oxygen levels. But as you can see, it's, it's difficult. It's difficult with oxygen therapy. I would like to just emphasize again the fact that oxygen, if it is prescribed to you, it's probably because you, your body needs it. So it is a prescription as if you're getting a prescription for high blood pressure to collect the high blood pressure, right? So it's a form of treatment and uh, it does help sometimes people do more in the terms of exercise in living a better life preventing complications in other organs that have to work on with suboptimal oxygen levels so all these things can help so can can be helped by using oxygen so the fact that someone is considered dependent on portable oxygen is a bit of a nuanced uh, perception because if you are thinking of oxygen as a form of treatment as a, something that helps you i wouldn't consider that a dependency or an addiction to something i know psychologically it can be hard to use oxygen it's very difficult because it's something that's visible it's not as if you're taking a tablet that you can hide it's something that everyone will see. And you may feel psychologically that you are in a terminal situation if you need to use oxygen. And it may or may not be the case. There, there may be a situation in which you use oxygen for years, 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 and it doesn't necessarily get worse. Your condition may be stable, but your body still may need a low level of oxygen. And I think it's just important to put it all in the context of what will happen in the future. Some people do get off the oxygen, but I would say that if you have a progressive condition or a condition that's not really improving, you may still need the oxygen in the long run. I hope this was helpful and not too discouraging. I would always just urge you to go back to talk to your healthcare providers to see what you can do with the oxygen, to have more discussions around this, to see if you can find devices that are a bit more comfortable, a bit more palatable in terms of uh, tolerance psychologically of using that, um, that device. Because, you know, some can be bulky, some can be noisy, some can be heavy. So if you can find a device that works better in your case to provide you the oxygen that you need, you may be better off than not using it at all and putting more strain on your body. So, like I said, talk to your healthcare providers to understand your own situation. Hope this was helpful to inform some of these conversations. And if you have further questions, do leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you in future episodes. All the best and good health.